everyone thanks for tuning in this week so this week i really wanted to do a free pattern knit along for you guys and i thought it would be really great to incorporate some of the stitches that i've showed you so far in the sunday stitches series so the last two episodes featured the seed slip stitch and the loop pattern stitch so I am using those two stitches in this pattern. It's a pattern for a washcloth, really simple, easy, beginner friendly. You're basically just knitting a square. And if you remember the last two stitches that I showed you guys, they're basically just variations on knitting and slipping stitches, both purl wise and knit wise. So pretty easy, pretty basic. Um, if you feel like you need more practice with those stitches, you can go back to those previous videos. Uh, but this is what the washcloth looks like. So you can kind of see here's the finished product um, it's about 11 by 11 so it's a good size washcloth and it features the seed slip stitch as the border and then that loop pattern stitch is the main kind of portion of the washcloth so it creates this really pretty kind of mesh pattern effect which is great i like to use this to wash my face at night um, you could probably also use it to wash dish dishes if you wanted to but i primarily use it just as like a face wash cloth and um, the yarn that I use is a cotton yarn by Knit Picks. It's their dishy yarn in the colorway linen and they have lots of different colors in this yarn and so you can kind of pick and choose some really fun colors to make things with. This also makes really great like gift ideas for like Christmas. Um, you can hand knit one of these uh, washcloths and then incorporate like some body wash or face wash in a little gift set for somebody. So um, these are really quick and easy to knit up. And so I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to do that. And I will also type up the pattern in the description box below. So you guys will have that to refer to as well. So if you want to learn how to make this washcloth, then just keep on watching. So the supplies that you will need for this project are obviously some yarn, medium weight cotton yarn works really well for dishcloths and washcloths. I am also using size US 8 knitting needles, a tapestry needle, and two stitch markers which are optional, and some scissors. So we start by casting on 55 stitches using whatever cast on method you prefer. Here I'm using the long tail method to cast on my stitches. So as I said before, we will be using the seed slip stitch as the border of our washcloth and we will begin by doing eight rows of the seed slip stitch. So again, for seed slip stitch, row one starts off as knitting one and then you begin the pattern repeat, which is slip one purl wise, knit one. So you will do that until the end of the row. Slip one purl wise, knit one. Slip one purl wise, knit one. turn your work and begin row two of the seed slip stitch which is knit one and then you begin the pattern repeat which is yarn forward slip one purl wise yarn back knit one and you repeat that until the end of the row so again yarn forward slip one purl wise yarn back knit one yarn forward slip one purl wise yarn back knit one until the end of the row. And then row three of seed slip stitch begins with knit two. And then you will begin the pattern repeat, which is slip one purl wise and then knit one. And you will repeat that until the last stitch. And when you reach the last stitch, you will knit that last stitch. So I 
have reached my last stitch in row three and I'm going to knit it and turn my work and begin row four and row four again starts off with knitting two and then you begin the pattern repeat which is yarn forward slip one purl wise yarn back and then knit one you'll repeat that all the way until the last stitch and when you reach the last stitch you'll knit one so again yarn forward slip one purl wise yarn back knit one until that last stitch and then you'll knit one to that last stitch in row four and I will knit that last stitch then I will repeat these four rows one more time to give me my eight rows of seed slip stitch so I've completed my eight rows of seed slip stitch and now we are coming up to the portion of the pattern where we will utilize our stitch markers if you want to so we will start off with the seed slip stitch again which is knitting one slip one stitch purl wise knit one slip one stitch purl wise and knit one and then this is the portion where i will place my stitch marker uh, and that delineates the difference between doing the seed slip stitch and the loop pattern stitch so now i'm going to start my loop pattern stitch and so the first row of loop pattern is knit every stitch so i'm going to knit the next 45 stitches until i get to the last five stitches and then i will place my marker at that point and finish off in the seed slip stitch So I'm just coming up to my last five stitches here and I'm going to place that second stitch marker and I'm going to finish up the row with the seed slip stitch. So again, I'm knitting one, slipping one purl wise, knit one, slip one purl wise, and knit one. And then I am going to turn my work and begin row two of this portion so again we start with the seed slip stitch pattern so we knit one yarn forward slip one purl wise yarn back knit one yarn forward slip one purl wise yarn back knit one then i'm going to slip my stitch marker and then i'm going to start on the loop pattern which is knit one slip one knit wise and you repeat that until you reach the uh, next stitch marker <laughs> reached my second stitch marker here and I'm going to end with the seed slip stitch which is knit one yarn forward slip one purl wise yarn back knit one yarn forward slip one purl wise yarn back knit one and then I am going to turn my work and begin row three. So again, beginning with the seed slip stitch, I'm going to knit two, slip one purl wise, knit one, slip one purl wise, 
and then I'm going to slip my stitch marker and start on the loop pattern and so for row three in the loop pattern you knit all the stitches until you get to that second stitch marker <laughs> reach that second stitch marker so I'm going to slip the stitch marker and slip one purl wise knit one slip one purl wise and finish off by knitting two and then I'm going to turn my work and begin row four so that starts with a knit two yarn forward slip one purl wise, yarn back, knit one, yarn forward, slip one purl wise, and yarn back. And then I'm going to slip my stitch marker and start on the loop pattern. And so the loop pattern is knit two, slip one knit wise, and knit one, and I'm going to continue slip one, knit wise, knit one until the last two stitches before the marker. And then I'll knit those two stitches. stitches before the stitch marker so I will knit those and then I will slip my stitch marker and I will um, yarn forward and slip one purl wise yarn back knit one yarn forward slip one purl wise yarn back and knit those last two stitches so I will repeat those four rows in the pattern until my washcloth measures about 10 inches and I repeated these four rows 19 times or 20 times total to get me the length that I needed. Once, once my washcloth was the desired length, I finished off by doing eight rows of seed slip stitch again, just like in the beginning. And so my washcloth is the length that I needed and I finished with my eight rows of seed slip stitch so now I'm ready to cast off in knit stitch so to do that I knit two and then I pass that first stitch over the second stitch and I keep doing that I knit one pass that first stitch over the second stitch on my needle and I will do that all the way across until I get to one stitch left on my needle.
down to knitting my last stitch then I'll pass that first stitch over the second stitch and I've got one stitch left on my needle so I'm going to cut my yarn here leaving a little bit of a tail there and I am going to pull the yarn through and that's it so then I am going to thread the yarn through my tapestry needle and I am going to weave in my ends.